fascinated with. I met Andrea Bloom through Blum through Instagram, and I was always fascinated by her quick tips and her videos. You must follow her if you need some daily inspiration. She's going to talk about today uh, something from her program, The Top Agent, and it's the Superstar Real Estate Agent's Daily Agenda. How many of you struggle with your daily agenda? You know, Gurinder spoke about actionable things that you could be doing, and a lot of it should be dedicated to prospecting. So Andrea's going to share a few tips that she thinks will help you in your Q1. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Virginia. And thank you very much for having me right after Grinder. <laughs> very nice of you. Now I need to step up, so for that reason I'm going to take off my shoes. I love fashion, but I love my, shoes, my feet a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to have this here so I can actually remember what I'm saying. I need to be fast because it took my minutes. <laughs> Okay, good morning everyone. You all look amazing. I always keep looking this way, no offense. You look really good this way, but this way it's better. I, I don't know where's my Corinda. You took my minutes, you took my clicker. What's going on? Is that clicker? I'm so sorry. But it left me the water. Thank you. The big one, the big one. Yes, the big one. So, my name is Andrea Bloom. I'm a real estate agent. If anybody's interested in buying, selling, renting, investing, let me know, I can help, or if you know someone. I'm also a real estate coach, which means as a real estate agent, I, my job, is, and I get paid for moving inventory from a seller to a buyer. And as a real estate coach, I tell agents that their only job is to move inventory from a seller to a buyer. We are professional decision maker operators. Our job is to put a buyer and a seller in the room and help them to say yes or no. Yes or no. We don't want a maybe. We want a yes or a no. We bring people to a decision and the only way to do that is by talking with a lot of people. And if you're in this room and you never talk with anyone ever, but you're closing a lot of transactions, I'll give you my time, please come on stage. We definitely need to know what you eat, what side of the bed you sleep, what you drink, because that's definitely not normal. Now, let's get to the business. I'm here to share with you the action plan, the daily activities in a life of a superstar, what they're doing every day. And some agents, they're working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and they're on all the time. And they're not making that much money. Now, the superstar agents, the legend agents, and I'm talking about agents that they're closing two and three and four hundred transactions every year. They're working four, four and a half, five days a week. And they take weeks at a time off to recharge and enjoy life. And the only reason they're able to do that is because they have systems and habits and routines in place. I wrote down here, superstar agents, legend agents, they always think of the consequence of not taking action. They always think of the consequence of not taking action. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that clarity and consistency creates speed. And the lack of clarity is the perfect environment for wasting time and literally lose your momentum and sales. And I know it's really easy in this industry right now to lose your clarity. You go on social media and you see an agent doing something and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to go and do that. And then you see another agent doing something else and you're like, no, 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 oh my God, I'm going to do that. I know, it's a really weird industry right now where real estate agents, they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. But I'm here to tell you that if you're not spending 80% of your time in creating these opportunities, to bring a buyer and a seller in the room and help them to say yes, you won't do very much in this business. Stop spending time in non-money making activities. When we get real, real and raw about what we're doing in a business and not what we feel that we're doing in a business, you're gonna to come to the conclusion that a lot of us were not doing that much. I wrote down here, 
We are what we repeatedly do, not what we repeatedly plan to do. It's a habit. And with that in mind, and the scary thought is that mediocrity is also a habit. Getting used to you less than we are capable of, it's a habit. And especially in today's market, when we have such a great excuse to grab, the market is low, the sellers are not selling, the buyers are not buyers, the interest rates are going up, there's no inventory and so on, it's so easy to get distracted. I wrote down here, if we repeatedly set goals and then we forget about them, we create a pattern of coming close but not quite finishing. And somehow, at some point, that becomes a comfort zone for us. So what I wanted to do for you today is to come up with something that is tangible, that you can take and say, this is something that I can use and I can, that can help me to move my, my goals forward. This is a map, trap, task map, whatever you want to call it. But these are tons of activities that somehow, how do we put it into our week schedule, our daily schedule, and still have time to go with the dog, to the vet, to go with the kids in the park, to see friends. And we really can break in 150 different ways what a top producer um, is doing on a daily basis. But I wanted to make it really simple for you. And I wrote down here, first things first, successful agents plan the year, believe it or not. No, okay. Plan the year. And if you're not at that stage where you can work four, four and a half days a week, then plan 240 days work in 12 months. So start there. So I wrote down this, first things first, when you work on your plan, work starting with your yearly plan, and put your family first. Always put your family first. No? You click twice? Okay. okay, so put your family first. Has it been a time where your family commitments collide with your business commitments? Anyone here? Yes. Yes. So what happens when, let's say you get on the call and you get this lead and they're really motivated and they seem to be reasonable with the price and you've put them on paper for tomorrow at six o'clock and you're super excited, you have a lead, you hang up the phone and then you remember, tomorrow is PA day, it's anniversary day, and now, what's gonna happen? The stress level goes up, and we go to these ups and downs, and, and highs and lows, and now you have to call your prospect up, or you have to call your, your um, significant other and change the deal. So what we want to do, we want to be able to anticipate, an idea would be to anticipate your yearly commitments with your family. I try to do that, I'm not always successful at that, but I know for example in August, September my family takes three weeks off. I put it in my calendar. I know that the end of the year my family takes three weeks off, so I add them in there. What else goes in there? Ladies, you're doing your hair, you're doing your nails on a regular basis. Just add them in your calendar. What else goes in there? Business commitments, like this one. If you go to seminars, I know I have 27 days this year already in my calendar of business commitments, events, and continuing education. Continue education, we do it every two months, two years. Put it in your calendar. Listen to this, end of April comes every year at the same time. It's fascinating. <laughs> and the last three weeks of April, every year, it's really slow in real estate. It's really slow. And the reason it's that slow is because clients, prospects, buyers, and sellers are taking the time to do their taxes, right? No, it's because agents are taking the time to do their taxes, and trust me, it happens every year. More than a decade in this business. So what are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing my tasks. Oh, it's gonna take a couple of hours. Oh, no, no, it's gonna take a week or two or three. I don't know, I need to gather my stuff. You need to plan that in advance. Put it in your calendar. You walk backwards if you know how long it will take. By the way, anyone knows that you can file your taxes before April? 
you, you can really do that. Now, what else goes in there? Long weekends, holidays. I mean, there are so many days in Canada. I swear, I'm, I'm coming from Romania. There's no long weekends there. Here, you're like constantly on vacation, long weekend. Plan it in there. It's about two weeks a year that you're going to have long weekends, and you definitely want to do that. You don't want to want to open house when everybody is at Niagara Falls or have a listing appointment right on Monday when your kids are home. So plan and have it in there. What else? Okay. Now, when it comes to your weekly and daily schedule, I wrote down a commonality, in my opinion, to all top producers that they're making two and three and four plus million dollars in sales volume per year. And I'm talking about really legendary agents, some of them here at the room, but I'm talking about the Sylvia Morris of the industry, the Shiv, the Karen Bernard, the Neil Schwartz of the industry. And they all have this in common. They have routines. They have really strong routines. What's a routine? A routine is a set of customary and often mechanical perform procedures or activities. A routine can be, for example, you wake up in the morning and go to the bathroom and hopefully you brush your teeth. That's a routine. Go in the shower. Hopefully, that's a routine. You take the same road going to work. That's a routine. You go into Starbucks and listen to this. You go to Starbucks and they already have your coffee ready for you. Anyone? Anyone happen that? That's a routine. Now, routines can be good routines and, and bad routines. And I wrote down here, a routine is a very powerful tool for creating lasting success in life and business. It instills discipline and consistency. And write these words down. Discipline and consistency are critical for our business, actually for anything you want to achieve in life. I wrote down here, let's see if it actually comes up, yes. Superstar agents start early and they stay late. Here's another commonality for all superstar agents. They get the morning right. They really get the morning right. If you want to have superstar agent, um, I, I lost my, my train of thoughts, but if you want to have superstar agent success, you have to get the morning right. And I wrote down here a couple of activities. Um, you can have it in any order you want, but this order helps. They exercise 45 minutes in the morning, and trust me, I talk with a lot of them, and not most of them, they actually don't enjoy this activity. But what they enjoy, they enjoy the serotonin and the dopamine that the exercise actually releases in their bodies, and they use that during the day. And superstar agents, they understand that we do have a very high stress business, which means you have to find resources to compensate for that and keep your energy high. I wrote down here a spiritual, whatever works for you, meditation, prayer, um, affirmations, whatever works for you. I said this a million times and I'm gonna say it again and again and again. Real estate is actually 2.5% skills, 2.5% uh, systems, and 95% mindset. And real estate, top agent, real estate agents, they understand the importance of starting the day with the right mindset. I wrote down here, they eat right, and less is more. The less you eat, the better you feel, the more stamina you will have. If you want to, don't have that ups and downs and, and the tiredness and the brain fog, watch what you eat. And before I go into this work schedule of a superstar agent, I want to share with you a couple of things that superstar agents understand not to do every morning. Number one, no phone calls before noon. None. That's it. Think about that. You, you booked that appointment for 6 o'clock, and you went to that appointment, and you got that listing, and it's priced right, and you most likely you're going to get it sold. And you have that energy, and you start the day, and you prospect it, and getting more business. How many times it happened to you that the next day you get a voicemail 
<laughs> with the client saying, well, we want to think about it, we want to change the deal, we don't want to do that anymore, or whatever. There's nothing good that happens in a voicemail before noon, I'm telling you. Don't pick up the phone. See what happens, the difference between superstar agents and the rest of the agents is that they understand and they don't allow anyone to distract their morning. If you take a phone call in the morning, you get distracted. Someone will pull you out of task. If you listen to your voicemail, someone will pull you out of track. Now, I wrote down here, they don't check their email. I really don't know when that became a routine. You wake up in the morning, you don't even go to the bathroom. The first thing you check your email. They actually don't check their emails, believe it or not. They don't. You get distracted. Let's back for a second here. How many in here, and I know because I've seen it before when, um, when they were asking, how many of you have a phone in here? Everybody? And how many of you, since you are at this meeting here, received a voice, uh, uh, an email, or a text? Okay, so a quarter said yes, the other three quarters are not telling the truth. <laughs> all of us, we all get distracted, and we are actually addicted to these phones. You don't realize how distracted it is. And I, I have to, to tell you, I participate in many, many events, and, and in the first role, and something now it's quite a distance, but sometimes it's really close, I cannot tell you how many people are actually on the phone texting, not only texting and answering emails, but they pick up the phone. And I'm not gonna, li listen, this is the issue. I'm not even gonna talk about the disrespect portion, because it's like picking up the phone in the middle of, of, a, of a meeting with your client. You're not paying attention. You're not present. And most importantly, you're not paying attention to your prospects. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, when do you plan on moving? Um, we're not. That hesitation there, that's your opportunity for more questions that would allow you to have a close transaction. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I hear you hesitating. You may be thinking, am I right? But if you're not paying attention, if you're thinking about the voicemail that you just heard, you're not gonna hear this. You're not gonna have a close transaction. If you're thinking of, or checking your email while you're talking with your prospects, you're not gonna hear that. And you lose a $30,000 paycheck. Now, I don't know, oh, you can see that, not here, but there. I don't know if you know this, but for at this point, the legend agents, they don't pick up the phone, their voicemail, they don't pick up their phone to look at their social media, they don't service people, and they don't perform any admin task at this point. Let's move on with the daily schedule. After exercising, getting themselves in the right mindset, Top agents, they spend the time, and it's, when I say spend the time, it's about two minutes to look over their business plan and their schedule for the day. They're not planning. Some of us are specialists on planning, and they spend a lot of time on planning. Top agents, they don't do that. They spend time the night before planning the next day, and that's it. The next morning, they look at their schedule for about two minutes, and they start the day. So, we are in the industry of talking with people, not to people. And top producers are not vomiting their narcissistic speech to their clients and they look back and they're like, oh my god, I did really good. I did fantastic. They actually ask questions. They ask a lot of questions. And they take the time every morning to actually repeat, perform, and understand what possibly their clients and prospects can throw at them. And they get prepared, and that task every day, it's called 
re uh, rehearsing your script dialogues and objections and trust me, yes, every day because the conversations change. The conversation that you had last January with the conversation that you have this January, I can guarantee you it's 100% a different conversation. So they spend the time to educate themselves and make sure that they have an answer for anything that is throwing at them. I wrote down here the next activity in the schedule, all, all superstar agents. It's prospecting daily with no fail. And I'm gonna say this again, prospecting daily with no fail, depending on the level that you're in. This activity is something that you're gonna share between you and your ISA, your in-sales sales, uh, assistant. But if you're not at that level, this is solo your job every day. And I know this is a foreign concept for many agents because they consider the creation of videos and creation of Canva, being prospecting, that's marketing. It's a very important portion of your business but it's not prospecting. Prospecting is talking with people, and I'm not gonna go into details about prospecting, the methods of prospecting, there are many of them, but I'm gonna tell you this. If you pick up your phone and you speak, you talk with your sphere of influence, you ask them, are you interested in buying, selling, renting, investing? Do you know anyone who may be interested in buying, selling, renting, investing? That's called prospecting. If you're calling your online leads that you create yourself from Facebook ads, from Google ads, or you pay a third party, pick up the phone and you ask my interested in selling, buying, renting, investing, or do you know anyone who may be interested in buying, renting, selling, investing? That's called prospecting. If you're calling someone that's been messaging you on Instagram and you're asking them if they're interested in buying, selling, investing, that's called prospecting. If you're farming, if you're farming and you're door knocking, you're call calling and you're asking them if they're interested in buying, selling, renting, investing, that's prospecting. If you're approaching expired, terminated for sale by owners, not expired, not terminated, not in Ontario, not that, but for sale by owners, if you approach them and you're asking them if they're interested in selling, buying, renting, investing, or they know someone, that's called prospecting. Every time you talk with people, that's called prospecting. Everything else, it's a different department, and we are in the department of talking with people. And the ideal, amount of time spent per day in order to really see results is three hours every day. If you have an inside sales, that job of that person is six, seven, eight hours a day for them to be on the call with people and book you appointments. Now, the next one. We do take lunch and some of them too long. Um, the next one is following up. Prospecting with no follow-up makes no sense. And I have to tell you, because of the coaching, I know some of agents are amazing prospectors. Like really, they're really amazing. I cannot tell you the dedication and the consistency, and they get all of these leads and they put them in this performance CRMs and they never talk with them again. It happens to all of us. And some of us, we're experts at that. And I can tell you that prospecting without follow-up, it's a very foolish activity. How many times you called someone that you met at an open house, and 30 <coughs> days later, and they're like, oh, we purchased already? Not a good feeling. All superstar agents are fanatical at prospecting. They understand that the fortune is in the follow-up. And not only that, they understand that 98% of business comes from follow-up and 84% happen on the fifth follow-up. So if you're not even making the first follow-up, you're not in this business. Next. This step really changes businesses. I'll be honest with you, when I talk with agents, very rarely I come across agents rather than the top agents that they know what I'm talking about. It's called pre-qualification. They take the time after the follow-up to pre-qualify their appointments. And if you never heard about it, contact me after this, this meeting and I'll be more than happy to give you details. But just to kind of get an idea, you book that appointment over the phone for tomorrow. You booked it yesterday for tomorrow. Today, you take the time 
to call your appointment and pre-qualify them for motivation, not for mortgage, for motivation that applies to buyers and sellers. That set of questions will help you to understand if you're keeping that appointment or there's still things to be done in order for that appointment to happen. And that really changes the game and saves you a lot of time, but not only that, it almost, guarantee, it almost guarantees you that signed contract through asking these questions when you go to your appointments. The next one. Previewing properties and learning the market. Years ago, like really a long time ago, I'm, I'm, all, I'm old, I'm, I'm on the side of the plus from the 35 plus. I'm, I'm actually older than Simon. I don't know where he is, but he said earlier the year that was he was born, so I'm older than him. So a long, long time ago, I met a, an agent, a very famous agent. Everybody knows him, I think. Um, it's the level of like the Drake kind of level of selling homes. And he mentioned to me that he goes previewing property. And I'm like, with clients? Um, no. He previews property, and I thought at that level maybe he sent someone for him to preview properties. No, he previews properties in order to learn the market, to learn to price property, to understand the buyer behavior, and that's very important. And all top agents are still doing it, regardless of how many times and how many homes they've seen. They go preview properties that they sold 20 years ago. They're still looking at these properties in order to understand the buyer's behavior in the market. Now, what's there? Okay. All superstar agents are booking their appointments in the afternoon, very rarely. They're making exceptions depending on their very extraordinary circumstances of their prospects. A mediocre agent will accept appointments anytime. During the uh, prospecting time, during your personal life, it doesn't matter. They're gonna accept anything because when you don't generate, then you have to tolerate whatever is throwing at you. Strong agents and top agents, they understand that if you generate, you don't have to tolerate. And not only that, but clients appreciate your structure and your professionalism and they actually trust you with their own equity and the best equity of their families. Now, these are the activities, and I know, I, uh, I know everybody's gonna be like, hey, Andrea, and, uh, in my day when I'm going to do my admin. You don't, you hire someone. The average price right now in, in Toronto at least is 1.2. If you don't have $300 to pay a transaction coordinator and spend your time in money-making activities, that's a problem. But when I'm going to put my uh, for sale sign and deliver my uh, marketing materials, you don't. That's a $20 job per hour. And you're requesting your clients to pay you $500 or $1,000 an hour. You hire someone. But when am I going to do my social media? You don't. You hire someone. Everybody's wondering why my social media is not performing. Because you're doing it. Hire someone that knows what they're doing. And your social media will start to perform. But when am I going to do my Facebook ads and Google ads? You don't. Hire someone to give you these leads and spend your time calling these leads and make money in real estate. But when am I going to do my video for social media because my face has to be in it? Well, one day a month. Take one Saturday a month. And don't do a big production because at the end of the day, you buy all these gadgets, you script for 40 hours, you make these videos, you put them in the draft, you never post them, and then at the time you have the courage to post it, they're already irrelevant. So don't, or if you really want to be consistent in that, just pick one weekend per month spending that. And stop spending time in non-money-making activities just because you don't want to deal with rejection. The boredom repetition is what's going to make you a millionaire. And superstar agents understand, and they hire someone for everything else. No, I know I'm late. One more thing, just draw a line on your paper and write this down. Routines of boredom repetition, money-making activities will make you a superstar agent. Thank you, guys.